Hello and welcome to Ecoholics. In this video, we are going to understand a very important macroeconomics concept called as Qflation. You must have heard about inflation and deflation. But what exactly is this Qflation? Let's understand. So, Skewflation is a terminology which is very important from the macroeconomics perspective because it has a very important term inside it which is skew. This word you must have heard in statistics where we call it as skewness. So whenever a factor or a variable or parameter has a greater impact on something, then obviously the whole impact will be going towards that factor. Because of that factor, a major impact has occurred on the economy or in a situation. So which is why the whole cause and effect relationship will be near to that factor. And this is called skewness, meaning that it has uh, stretched towards one particular factor, not all factors. Now here, when we say inflation, when we say inflation, so we usually say that there's a general increase in the price level of all the different commodities. But this is different from inflation. So which is why today here we are learning what is skewflation and why is it important to know about skewflation. So firstly, let's understand what is the concept behind skewflation. Skewflation. As I said earlier, skewflation comes from the fact that when one factor uh, dominates the other factors which are responsible to cause a certain increase in price or price level in the economy, then all the cause and effect relationship will be going towards only that factor. For example, let's talk about fuel prices. Okay, only fuel prices. Okay, now what happens when only fuel prices are fluctuating and are on the increase and because of that price level increase of the fuel prices, the other things also start to change. The other complementary things around fuel prices also, also start to increase. So what does this mean? This means that the whole economy is under the dominance of fuel prices and that's why this is not inflation because it is not taking into consideration all the different goods and services in the commodity basket. It is only concerned with the fuel prices. And so this is the impact of skewflation. Similarly, let's take another example. Let's say that there are food prices and the prices of non-food items, non-food prices. Okay, in the commodity basket, in the commodity basket through which we understand that what is the price structure or fluctuation of goods and services in the economy. Okay, now in this, let's say that because of a certain reason, because of let's say certain calamity or supply shock or something, the food prices have increased. Okay, the food prices have increased but the non-food prices have not increased they are pretty much stable now because the food prices are on the hike from the commodity basket we cannot call it inflation because inflation will mean that there is an increase in the general price level usually this is a mistake made by most of the students it's a very common mistake that when someone asks okay um the food prices are increasing. What do you think? What is happening in the economy? They would swiftly say, uh, inflationary trend. But inflation will mean that there is a general hike in almost all the different goods and services, which is not the case over here. So here, we will say that there is skewflation. Now, Understanding the word is one thing, but what is the importance of this word? Why are we understanding it out of all the other things? So skewflation or such words, such new things, such new applications are important to note because in a macroeconomy level, 
while making policies while implementing policies or analyzing the policies not just one factor but there are many many multitude amount of factors that are responsible so to uh, address the exact cause and uh, cause and effect relationship it's very very important to know what is the factor called Wh what exactly is the factor about how can we reduce the um, uh, impact of such factors prices or anything that's going around for example if th there was a case of inflation let's say then we know that there are certain changes in the economy that we could have made so that we could control the possibility of inflation but will they work exactly like the same way in the consideration of skewflation also they might not work because that was a solution for inflation it might not be the solution for skewflation and which is why it's very important to understand these new words that happen to be a very integral part of macroeconomics i'll keep up with more such new words and new such economics insights till then stay tuned to ecoholics